All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Acer Aspire A515-55 series. All right, this is model number N18Q13. All right, we're going to be using a JIS-1, J1, or PH1 screwdriver to get the screws out. Um, the full model number is A515-55-35SE. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove all the screws. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, even if you're just saying like hi or something, um, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. All right, so let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Also, this model has a little pinhole here, which is like a battery reset button. Sometimes if your computer doesn't turn on properly, you can try pressing that. I just use like a little SIM eject tool or a folded out small paper clip. And then I press and hold that for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power. All right, anyways, let's get all these screws out and then we will go ahead and see if we can get this working. So this laptop, it like powers, like you can see the charge light coming on and stuff, but nothing comes on the screen. So we're gonna see if hopefully doing some battery resets, checking the RAM and everything will get it working. All right, so now I got all the screws, I'm gonna get my fingernails in the gap here, and then I'm gonna push on the palm rest, not on the touchpad, just the palm rest area, and let's see if we can pop this off. Okay, um, these clips seem to be pretty strong. Let's see, let's try from this side. Okay, and it's not really popping. I hear some clips popping, but it's not the ones that I need. Let's try from the side first. Okay, it looks like the side works best. So go from the side. Be careful not to press on the keyboard area. You don't want to push the keyboard keys in through the bottom. Okay, so it looks like you go from the side there. Once you get the side popped up, let's see if we can work our way around. So we got that. Okay. Now that we got a gap here, I'm going to see if I can pull this up and slide my fingernail underneath. Nope, that's still not working. So I guess we're going to go around the side completely. So let's go around this side more. Okay, and you can see that's working. So we'll do the same thing over here. Go around the side, slide my fingernails in the gap here, and we'll pop this up. Okay, oh, this side's stuck. All right, so since we got this side up, let's start from there. We're basically pulling the cover like this so that it pulls the clips away from the back. So we'll do that. Okay, you can see we kind of have more of it flexed up. I'm pushing this in as well. And this is unclipping, okay? We're gonna go over here and do somewhat the same thing, pushing, but this side seems to be stuck a lot more. So maybe I need to get a fingernail or something in there. There we go. Okay, so now we got that. Let's see, this bottom piece is being a little tricky. Sometimes it helps to grab the cover and then kind of move it side to side. And let's see if that will work. No, okay. Let's see, how are these clips holding? They're really strong. Hmm. Well, we got this off. Uh, I don't want to damage anything, so I'm going to hold this down here and see if I can kind of wiggle and pull this. Wow, these clips are really strong. What if I just pull it straight up? It looks like that kind of worked. Okay, so just pulling straight up, and then now let's try and wiggle. Nope. Okay, I guess we just pull it all the way up. So we just rotate it and flip it all the way up like that, and that unclipped the whole thing. Okay, so there we go. Oh no, there's no removable RAM in here. Okay, so not really much to work on in here. Um, let's go ahead and remove the uh, battery and then do a power drain here. So I'm going to first um, get a thumbnail. All right. Now what we're going to do, um, let's see, I'm going to disconnect the main battery and the CMOS BIOS battery. If you're wondering, the Acer battery is AP18C8K. That's the model number. Okay, we're going to disconnect the battery. Let's zoom in here and see if we can get this out. So peel this tape away first. This has the little winged connector, so I just go with my fingernails at the wings, and then I'm going to just wiggle side to side like that, and there we go. That battery connector came out really easily. Make sure it doesn't reconnect itself, You don't, especially you don't want it to go in crookedly. 
All right, then we got this. Um, this is the CMOS BIOS battery. So I'm gonna wiggle and pull this. All right, if you replace the battery, make sure the red wire is going towards the SSD here and the black wire is going towards the outside case. This is an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. We're not gonna be taking that out, but there's one screw, it pops up at an angle and then you can pull it out. Like most laptops have RAM. All right, so now that we got the batteries disconnected, oh, did they not even put screws hold? So they don't put screws to hold this battery apparently, so be careful opening that up. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. I also hold the battery, um, the little uh, battery reset power button as well. Since we have the cover open, it's easier to access. You don't need like any tools um, once you get that open. Let me see if I can show you here. So the button is, where is it here? So it's right there, that little circle here. So you can press and hold that button. You can feel it actually click. So press and hold that for about 15 seconds. So we'll do that as well. Okay. All right, as you can see, there's a slot for RAM here, but there's no RAM in there. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if there's built-in RAM or if somebody opened this before. If somebody opened this before and they took the RAM out, that could be why it's not booting up. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Right now we're gonna plug it in without the batteries connected and see if anything happens. So press the button. I do see the keyboard lighting up. I don't know if you can see that. All right, keyboard's lighting up. Nothing's happening on the screen. We did remove the CMOS BIOS battery as well as the main battery. So sometimes if it's doing a BIOS reset, it might take a while to power up um, or to show anything on the screen. You can see the fan is spinning. I hear that, um, nothing is showing here except for the power light one. And yeah, there's not really anything else here. It turned itself off. So let's see if it's gonna turn itself back on. And it is turning itself back on and off. Huh, is the charge port wobbly? No. No, it's not a bad charge port. All right, anyways, you can see there's the USB port here and the headphone jack or headset uh, 3.5 millimeter jack there. Um, that's on its own separate board. This has a little flip latch that you can flip that and then you can pull that out. Same with this side, there's a flip latch, okay. Wireless uh, card is here with the antennas. To remove those, you go from the tail and you pull straight up. I do have videos showing this on other models. Um, I'm not gonna be pulling everything out of this, but I'm just gonna show you what's inside. Here you have the CPU, uh, which is soldered to the motherboard. All right, um, and then you have the heat sink going over here to um, cool it down. Um, there's quite a bit of dust in there that maybe it needs to have the fan removed and cleaned out. You got the keyboard connector here um, underneath this piece of adhesive here, okay. And under here, okay, so this has the sliding, uh, oops, sorry, it has the sliding type latch. Oh, the screen is coming on, so I think we might be good. All right. Give me a second, I'm gonna try and peel this so I can show you, but I wanna be careful here. It doesn't show it's booting Windows, it's just showing the Acer logo. But uh, you can see this little white tab here, so that slides out, there's one on both sides. You wanna carefully slide both out, be careful not to pull too hard, you don't wanna damage it. All right, and then once you slide those two tabs back, you can pull this cable out, this is the keyboard cable. This is the keyboard backlight connector, flip latch there. Um, you got this little cable here, which I think is for the speakers. Um, it's running underneath to this, and then you have one going to this wire, and then one going to this wire, or this speaker. Okay, here you can see the Acer logo, but as you can see, it's not booting, it's not doing anything. So, I don't know, it's probably still completely dead. Um, you do have the two connectors here. This larger one's for the fingerprint, uh, sorry, for the touchpad, or trackpad and then you have the smaller one for the fingerprint reader um, and then you have the LCD LVDS connector if you're gonna mess with this latch and the cable make sure that you disconnect the battery disconnect the cable here or the charge charger and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power before messing with this otherwise you can burn out the um, capacitors or the backlight circuit or you can fry the cable you can fry the screen you can fry this connector so make sure disconnect the power 
disconnect the battery, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds, and then you can go ahead and mess with this cable. Um, this battery doesn't need to be removed to do that, so yeah. All right, you also got the fan connector, which has the little wing connector, just like the battery, and the speaker one uses that type of connector as well. And I think that's pretty much all there is in here to look at, so yeah. Um, I mean, it's stuck on this Acer screen. I'm going to just hold the power button to shut it off. Let me put the main battery and the CMOS BIOS batteries back in and see if we have any luck. I wonder what caused it to stop working like that. Let me actually take the fan out um, to clean it up a little bit if we can. Uh, let's see, there's two screws here. Okay, and then disconnect the power cable. All right, so we'll get that. And there's quite a bit of dust in here, as you can see. All right, so yeah, there's like a big dust bunny blocking up this whole thing. We're gonna actually pull the whole fan connector out. If you replace the fan, make sure you plug it in the right way. You can see the exposed pins on that side. On this side, it's flat. You want the exposed pin parts facing up and you can actually see the red wire is going down towards where the battery was and then the black wire is going up towards that. So I'm gonna clean this out just using a toothbrush. So I hold the fan and then I kind of brush it so it spins slowly. Um, I'm gonna do that to the trash can next to me. All right. And then I'm gonna clean out the heat sink as well. I don't know if this laptop is still gonna work or not. We'll find out. Let me clean this out. Okay. Wow, that heat sink was super dirty. My guess is it probably overheated because of how clogged that heat sink was. Okay, so you can see, now you can actually see the individual fins. Um, and then I'm gonna just blow this out. Okay, now that we've got that all dusted, let's adjust the fan a little bit. Okay, we'll get the fan back in. Get this line back up. Pinch the two together. All right, sorry, I know I'm working on this like somewhat zoomed out, but I have another customer coming soon and I'm just trying to do this quickly. <laughs> all right, so we'll get this all back in. There's also a little latch under here, which is probably for um, a hard drive, a standard two and a half inch SATA hard drive. I think some models, maybe they have a hard drive there since maybe they use a smaller battery. I don't know. I'm not sure. It doesn't. I didn't see a label saying what it's actually for. Right, anyways, we're gonna hold this out of the way, get the battery connector back in, make sure that you plug the battery in the right way. Uh, the red wires are going towards the SSD, and then the black wires are going towards the side with the fan, so make sure you put that in the right way. Okay, so pinch that all the way in. Okay, put that back down, stick this back on top. All right, don't forget the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. Reconnect that. Okay. Let's see this. Okay, that's fine. Okay. The main cable, if you're gonna mess with to remove the battery is this one. So the rest, you don't really have to worry about that so much. Uh-oh, I think my other customer's here. I'm gonna power this on. We'll see what happens and then, yeah. I'll be back. But uh, this one, again, the battery doesn't have anything holding it in place, so I have to be careful. Um, but yeah, I powered it on. Let's see if anything comes on the screen. Probably have to wait a while. So give me a second. I'm going to check what my customer, if my customer is outside, and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right. So after letting it sit and the battery was in there, it looks like it's working now. I don't know if it's going to show the username, so i got to hide that, and it does. So, yeah, it looks like we're good. Let me reassemble this thing, and we should be good to go. Shut it down first. All right, let me get my camera back up where it was. All right, let's go ahead and close this up, and let's get this all reassembled. Again, I don't know, this battery's not held in with screws, so it's all just held in from the gap here, all right? Okay, so let's get this line back up. Um, also, I'm not exactly sure which RAM this uses, but it does look like DDR4 or PC4 RAM. So if you're trying to upgrade, you can probably get any uh, DDR4 RAM to stick in there. If you want to upgrade the SSD, then you got an M.2 SSD here. And again, I don't know what that little slot connector is for, but yeah. 
All right, so we're gonna get this back in. We're gonna put it back the way we took it out. So we're gonna start with the bottom first, uh, going at an angle like this. Push that all in, okay. Click that down if it didn't go down all the way. And then let's work our way up the sides actually, or the back, and then get the sides all clicked in. There we go. And let's go ahead now and get all the screws tightened back into place. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, if you can't help out that way, again, it would help a lot if you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. But uh, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. Uh, you're you can stay while I get all these screws back in and yeah. Let's get all these back in, and then we should be good to go. Yeah, sometimes what causes that is there's some dust that maybe shorts out something there, so it helps to kind of clean everything out if you can. Uh, you want to be careful though with static, you don't want to cause some static to damage the motherboard. All right, but yeah, it looks like we are good to go. Let's get the last few screws in. Alright, and there we go. Alright, let's drop this. Bye.